Hey guys, welcome to 12 Tone. Today we're going to talk about chords. Up to now, we've been viewing them only as stacks of thirds, which most of them are, but there's a lot of really interesting things you can do if you're willing to bend that just a little, and today we're going to look at some of the more popular ways to do that. The first type of chord we're going to talk about is a very simple chord known as a power chord. This is a triad, but with no third. It's just the root and the fifth. It's an incredibly simple sound relying on only the most basic intervals, but it provides a massive wall of consonants and stability. It's also really easy to play on most instruments, and because the third is so important to chord quality, it lets you write more melodic progressions without really worrying about the harmonic implications. Power chords are used heavily in rock, punk, metal, and any other style where riffs are more important than complex harmonies. Moving a little further, we come to what are known as suspended or sus chords. These are chords in which the third degree has been in some way displaced. Usually, this means replacing it with the fourth degree. This fourth works a lot like it does in a dominant chord, in that it wants to resolve back down to that three. This lets you delay resolution a little bit, use more interesting melodic notes, and get some more involved harmonic movement out of pretty basic chords. Sometimes, instead of the fourth, we use the second for what's known as a sus2 chord. I especially like using these with minor chords because the second is a half step below the minor third and takes on a sort of leading tone-like role. You can also combine them into the sus2-4, and of course you can use them with seventh chords as well. Moving on, we come to a slightly confusing chord type, the six chord. This is a triad with an added major sixth on top. The triad could be major or minor, but the six is major either way. If you watched our tension video, you may know that we usually call this a 13th, but because we're not playing the 7th, we don't think of it in the same sort of extended chord tone role. We call it a 6 instead so the player knows that it's only a triad. An interesting thing about 6 chords is that they're enharmonic to the first inversion of 7th chords. For instance, D6 with D, F sharp, A, and B is the same notes as B minor 7, B, D, F sharp, A, and D minor 6 is the same notes as B minor 7 flat 5. So how do we know if it's a 6 chord or an inversion? Honestly, that mostly comes down to your ear. You have to listen to how it functions in the harmony. Does it sound like D or B is the root? Which one makes more sense? There won't always be a clear-cut answer, so go with what feels right to you. Six chords are one example of a larger class known as added note chords. These are what they sound like. Chords, usually triads, with one or more additional notes added. The other most popular type is the add nine chord, which is a triad with, you guessed it, an added ninth. This gives you the benefit of tensions without dealing with the consequences of the seventh degree. Compare this G add nine to this G major nine. You can also combine the two, making a six nine chord. As for why we call this one a nine when we don't call the other one a 13, don't worry about it. Tradition is weird sometimes. Anyway, this is especially useful in final cadences and harmonically complex progressions. You don't want to resolve back to a basic triad after all the cool stuff you've been doing, but ending on a major 7th chord leaves you with a hanging leading tone. Resolving to a 6 or 6-9 six chord instead avoids that problem and gives you a rich, complicated chord with no real dissonance. And speaking of endings, that's it for chords. At least for today. Try the exercises, join our mailing list for scans of all our episodes, and keep on rockin'.